where does the, the believer who has died reside until the return of Christ? Well, the, the short answer is he resides in the afterlife. <laughs> in other words, in the afterlife is the spiritual realm. Uh, now, again, that realm doesn't have literal latitude and longitude. All afterlife terms, whether in the, they're in the Bible or the ones we use, they, they sound geographical. You know, we talk about people passing over going to the other side. Well, again, the, the, we use these physical terms, these physical descriptors, these geographical descriptors, because the way we talk requires a sense of place. It requires physical location uh, because we're embodied. We, we, that's all we can relate to, place and location. Uh, but all the terms are, are metaphors from passing from our realm, the realm of the embodied, the, the human realm, to the divine realm, the supernatural realm, the unseen realm, the spiritual realm, whatever you want to call it. And over in that realm, again, we still have more place location terms. We talk about heaven. We talk about hell. Heaven being the place that, that's associated in the spiritual realm with the presence of God. Hell being the place that is certainly not the presence of God. So we even use geographical terminology to talk about the disembodied spiritual world. Uh, but we just have to do that because that's all we can really process and understand. The idea is that the afterlife includes both reward in the presence of God for believers you know, who have believed in what God asked them to believe. And it also includes separation from God's presence for those who have not believed what God says they need to believe. So that's how I would, I would approach that question. Where, where does the believer who has died reside until the return of Christ? I think Paul's clear that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We go to the afterlife, we go to the spiritual realm, and we are with the Lord. Second Corinthians 5, 6, 8, again, I might as well read it. We have here, so we are always of good courage, Paul says. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So there he contrasts being embodied in in our natural realm as opposed to being in the realm where God is, the realm of the disembodied, the afterlife, and specifically, again, the subset of the afterlife, the, the place where God's presence is. But uh, intermediate state, again, I think we call it intermediate at least my experience in, in reading theology and teaching theology, we use this, uh, again, as sort of a, a term that is a precursor to the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, and I would, I would just say this, before, what you experience after death as a believer when you are with the Lord is just as real as what you will experience after we have the new heaven and earth a globalized Eden, because that's where God's presence will be as well. One is not more real than the other. Again, we sort of think of this pre-state as something, again, lesser than you know, the ultimate kingdom. But, and that's natural for us to do because we can't really understand what life is like disembodied. Uh, whereas we can, when we talk about you know, the, uh, the global Eden, the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, to me, they're six of one and a half a dozen of another because they're both as real. They are both where God is. Uh, yes, there's a difference, again, because we are re-embodied and glorified bodies uh, for that existence. And even if you look at, at the afterlife descriptions in the New Testament prior to, of course, you know, the, the ultimate uh, consummation of, of the kingdom in the, in the new heaven and new earth, there's still there's still embodiment language used when, you know, Peter, James, and John see Moses and Elijah. Well, they got to be looking at something. They're not looking at air. So there's still this sense that even though, you know, we have this, this other realm, this, this afterlife realm uh, where Moses and Elijah are, uh, God makes them discernible uh, in that scene. Uh, when, when people have visions, prophets have visions uh, of, again, the spiritual realm. They're still looking at embodied people like angels or believers or whatever. Again, that is a concession, I think, both to the reader you know, and, and, and the writer, but I think also it's a concession that God makes uh, for people to help people process the fact that when you die, even though you're disembodied, you're still you, and you will be able to recognize other people and believers. You'll be able to recognize the Lord. You'll be able to recognize Moses and Elijah. Uh, again, we're not told exactly how that works 
But all of these states of being, again, what I, what I think people need to take away is they are all just as real uh, collectively uh, and individually. There's not, there's not one that's better than the other, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Like, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm in the holding tank here and I got to wait for what's really good. You're not going to be thinking that uh, in the presence of God.